So on this particular day, November 16 to be precise, that was the actual day Stan gave me how to deliver. Around 4 a.m., I went to the restroom to ease myself. I just saw my mucus plug comes out. When I got pregnant, I didn't know I was pregnant at the initial stage. It was no, there was no morning sickness, no symptoms of pregnancy, no spitting, no vomiting, go to work, come back. But it got to a stage. I started feeling feverish, constant headache. Then my mouth was bitter, so I was thinking probably it's malaria. My wedding preparation was in progress at that time, so moving around, I was thinking that was what caused it. So I just went to somewhere, a friend's place to collect my attire for the wedding. I said, ah, this one I'm always feeling free. Let me just branch at the pharmacy, get a pregnancy test strip, then do it myself and see what's going on. Then, before then, I always have regular menstruations, whereby my menstruation may not come for three months, two months. So I was like, I can't get pregnant now, now. And I've been to several hospitals. My doctor would be like, I should just calm down, I'll be pregnant. That when am I getting married? I'll tell him soon. He'll tell me, okay, anytime you're about to get married, just let me know so that I will know what to do. So, after getting the pregnancy test strip for like three days, I didn't even bother to do it because I was like, I can't get pregnant, Jerry. So it continues like that. But there was a day I was at home, I didn't go to work. While lying down, I was just like, this one I'm always in fever. I've treated malaria, the thing is not going. Let me just try this strip and see if it will come out negative or positive. So I went into the restroom, tried the first strip, it was positive. I was like, no, this can't be true. I went in, take the second strip, still do the same thing, it was still positive. I was like, ha, I'm done for it. And I called my sister, that, man, this is what is happening now, that seems I'm hooked. She was not like, you're not hooked now, Maybe your wedding is on the way. I said, I still can't believe I'm pregnant, that I have to run a, a lab test to confirm. So I went to the laboratory, they run a blood test for me, it came out positive as well. I was like, man, at last, God have done it. So everything keeps going, keeps going. I register for Antinata after my wedding. But it got to a stage. The doctor was like, Madam, you have to run another scan. Because the first scan before my wedding was like seven weeks gone. So he said, I have to run another scan. I said, problem. The scan said everything is perfect. Everything is OK. I said, no problem. So every two, two weeks, I go for Antinata. But when it got to 24 weeks, he said, I have to do another scan. Then I started getting scared. I called my sister, how many scans did you do when you were pregnant? She said two. So she said there is no problem that I should just go for it. I went for the scan. The scan said nothing is wrong with me down. Okay. So I started going back for my antenata again. But at 30 weeks, my doctor said I have to go for a pelvimetry, um, pelvimetry scan. I was like, why? He said, because I'm short. I said, short? That does not have anything to do with pregnancy. He said he knows what he's doing. That that will give him a clue of what is expected. So I had to go for the pervimentary scan. When the result came out, it was like the posterior is 11 centimeter, the anterior is 10 centimeter. I was like, sir, you don't understand that which one is posterior, which one is anterior. He now said the back is okay. That, but where the baby will pass is supposed to be 11 centimeter, but that 10 centimeter is not good enough. That you will first try normal delivery. But if he sees that time is running out, you will have to go for CS. I was like, Ugh that this is serious, he said there is no cause for alarm, that I should just be praying, then I should be doing exercise. Well, I continue with my normal exercise, walking around, moving around. But when it gets to 37th week, it was like, have I first seen any signs of contraction, anything? I said, no, he said, I said, what will I see? It was like, I was tired feeling pains, that I should check my time. Anytime I feel a sharp pain, I should just take my time, check the time interval of the contraction, then I should call him. Okay, I said, no problem. At 37 weeks, nothing. 38 weeks, nothing. 39 weeks, nothing. At 40 weeks, it was like, ah, madam, if by next week, we didn't see anything, we may have to induce you. I was like, induce, he said, yes, that they will have to force me into labor. I was like, no problem, that I pray I got into labor before then. So on this particular day, November 16 to be precise, that was the actual day Stan gave me how to deliver. Around 4 a.m., I went to the restroom to ease myself. I just saw my mucus plug comes out. 
then I said, okay, no problem. For me to go back, I started feeling like I want to use the restroom again. I went in, pool, through everything. But after that, coming out from the restroom, I was not myself again. Because I started feeling contractions here and there. Some would say 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I didn't feel my own like that. Mine was for five minutes. For five minutes. So I had to call him around 5 a.m. The doctor, I don't know how I'm feeling. Can I come over to the hospital? He said that she not come yet. That she wait till around 6.30 or 7 in the morning. So I can't sleep after I was so around that 6.30 to 7. I had to go back to the hospital. He said they would check me. They checked me. They said I'm on four centimeters. The nurse asked me, Madam, where is your... Where's your baby things? I said, I didn't come with it. I have to go back home and bring it. She was like, I should go. When I got home, I told my husband, Oga, they said, I'm on four centimeters. I should go and bring my baby things. But me, I'm hungry. I want to eat. I was like, eat. You are not really feeling pain. Now, let's wait till you. you start feeling the pain constantly. Then we'll go. I said, eh, no, Allah, but you, you can take baby things, sir. I want the food I want to eat. Actually, it was a bite. I sat down. I hit one bowl of a bar completely. I was not like, Ugh. After eating, I just relaxed on the chair like this. I was feeling pain. My continence has changed, everything. When he came back, I was like, how oh, are you not feeling? I said, the pain is still there. Though. I'm still feeling the pain. He now said, OK, let's go to the hospital so that people around will notice that you are into labor. So I went with him to the hospital. I said, you shouldn't follow me inside there. You should go back home there. I mean, I'll go. When I got there, did not decide to check me again. It was still four centimeters. They said I should start moving around the hospital. So I was moving, moving, doing exercise, but the pain was much. So it got to a point I started crying. I started crying. They were like, Madam, you shouldn't be crying. No. This one you are crying. Save your energy for when you want to push. I was like, well, God sees me. God sees my God sees everything. I was start moving around, moving around, praying. But it seems as if this waste wants to remove out of me as in with the pain I'm feeling, so I see if my waist wants to remove. So, and my actual doctor was not around. He traveled. He now said, okay, we're sending another doctor that they should come and check me. When they check again around 12 p.m., it is still four centimeters. I was like, my God, what's happening now? The man said, the, man, the doctor now come in and said, Madam, where is your husband? I said, he's around. He said, you should give the phone to you. Now I told my husband that we told you that if the labor prolongs, that I will have to work for six years. But let's still wait and see what will happen. It continued that I got to a stage. The nurse wants to check me. She was like, I should open very well for her to check. I was like, Madam, I can't open my laps more than this. She was like, uh, no doctor can deliver you through this means now. You have to open it very wide. You have to put both your laps on the bed so that you can say, Madam, I can't open more than this, please. You now call two nurses to come and hold it. As those ones were stretching, I said, except you break my bones. That's when my last will touch the floor. That, that's the only thing I can do. The nurses now told her that, Madam, she can't spread her last more than this, except you want to break her rib bones. She now said, okay, no problem. That I see as I'll go for. Then we continue. The journey continues, continue around to four. The doctor now calls. Now said, Oga, the see as your wife will go for. That was when everything now scattered because I was crying. My husband was crying. There are no money. That way will he get money? Asked the doctor. The doctor said 180. My husband said, Hey, that way will he get the money? That you should beat it down for him. He said, The last price you can take is 150. No money. We only have 3,000 left. The boat home and away. It was like, What will he do? I, mean, I was crying. My, the doctor now called. When I now speak with the doctor, the doctor was like, Who told you that you wanted to say it? I said, The shark told me that is my husband. I said, Why will he tell me that? That he's not supposed to inform me at all. That on a normal day, I'm not supposed to even hear that I want to do say it. I was like, Well, Sir, but you have to pay down the price. He said, this is not a matter of price. This is a matter of saving your life and that of your baby. I was like, okay, sir, no problem. So we just started calling people, but thank God somebody each have missing on us, everything. So you now said you call a particular doctor that when the doctor comes in, whatever he said is final. Around 10 minutes to four, that was when the doctor he called came in. That one, when that one first saw me, he was like, Madam, are you okay? He said, no, sir. He said, I can see it within you that you are not okay. And I said, you should bring glove for him to check me again. When he to also check, it was still four centimeter. It was not like, Madam, you'll be okay now, but he see as you do. Are you ready? I didn't even answer him, I was just crying. And I said, can I pull off my clothes myself? I said, yes, I pull off the clothes. 
they've already arranged the theater, done everything. So he said I should, they should set two drips on my hand, which they did. They now took me to the theater. When we entered the theater, I was like, can they call in my husband for me? They were like, yes. They are, what happened? I said, we want to pray. So when he comes in, we pray. The doctor was like, we are not going to cause yet, so that we'll pray before we start. I want to see him that we should pray. We prayed. They said, ask him to step out. But when they are about to start, they just use normal their clothes, cover me, leave a space around my belly for where they will cut me. So the doctor was not like, all I know what they said last was give her the injection. It was just as if the dread cutting on my face. By the time I, I, I bought, during that period, I was noticing someone moving my legs, moving my legs. Then by the time I would wake up, I was just singing, thank you, thank you, Lord. But I was hearing the cry of a baby. Everywhere was blue. So by the time everything now came clear, I saw the matron holding my baby. I was not like, what's happening around here? I couldn't see the doctors again, they are gone. They took me to the ward, lying face up, they set their drips. It's meant for me to stand up, I could not stand up. I was like, what's happening? They said, I undergo a CSO. My body is still not strong enough for me to stand up. That I should just lie down. I could not turn, I could not move. On the second day, when the doctor came, it was not like, ah, madam, you're supposed to have stand up. I said, I'm trying to stand up, but I can't. That I even want to turn. I can't turn. That the pain is too much for me. My friend that came to visit me and said, OK, doctor, you want her to stand up? She said, yes, OK. They now guide me. I sit down first. Then later on, they said I should stand on my two feet, which I did. They said I should move from one leg forward, which I did. They said I should sit down back. Then from there, I started standing up, doing things on my own. But they didn't allow me to drink water or take anything. They said I should wait. The doctor said I'll start eating on Tuesday. I was like four days without water, without food. Is that possible? They said I had to fast, then I had to build. I was like, okay. They said drip for Saturday, Sunday. Monday afternoon, they removed the drip that my drip has finished, that there is no more drip for me. I was like, so what will I be doing? I have to breastfeed my baby then. Will I be breastfeeding baby on an empty stomach? They said the drip I collected are the foods I'll take. I was like, okay, no problem. But on Monday afternoon, I started belging, but I was very tasty for cold water that I should just see block, ice block and drink. But they said, no, that I can't, okay? I said, no problem. Then they bring out, they said, bilge, I bilge. Fat, no fats. They said, I have to fat. Then in the night, I farted in the ward. But I was not satisfied that, because if I tell them, they will not believe me. So I went, I went to the reception, sat with a nurse on the chair. My next fat shaked the chair. I said, nurse, you can see that I farted though. You push, give me water and drink. They said, no, that they have to wait for the doctor's order. So, in the morning of Tuesday, around 6 a.m., I was feeling like I want to faint. Everywhere was just blowing in my face that I, I need food, I need water. They called the doctor. The doctor said they shouldn't give me anything till he comes. But probably he says that it will come late. Around 8 o'clock, he now called them that they should put glucose in water for me. I should take four spoons. I was like, four spoons of water? That won't do anything in my system. I'm tasty. I need water. They said I should just obey. They gave me four spoons. I took, I was the one checking time. Immediately it was an hour, I went back and called the nurse that it's an hour already, I need water. She said I should take four spoon. I said I'm not satisfied. She said I should take another four spoon, which I did. She now said I should not take extra water or else they will return me back to the theater. I said, okay. As I was trying to see if I can sip water from the remains, she was just coming, she was like, Madam, you want to drink? I said, no, I want to throw the water away. That is not good again. She said, no problem. When the doctor now came, she was like, Madam, how are you feeling? I said, I'm fine, but the pain is still there. She was like, I was like, okay, no problem. That you can eat now. I said, doctor, I can eat. She said, yes, I can eat. She said, anything. He said, yes. I said, okay, I'm hungry. You push, you give me food. They were not like, I can't eat solid food. That is pap. I can't take. Okay, you push, you bring the pap. They bring the pap, I drink. I was like, I'm still hungry. That I need food. That was when they now started giving me food. 
doing everything but the pain was much i could not do anything they were like don't lift something from the floor don't carry anything heavy you don't move around don't do this don't do that but at the end of the day it's cause for celebration